He is meeting every one of our needs and we welcome you to another episode of Just Like Him. I'm Shamma and I'm here with my sister Shalom and we're going to encourage you with the Word of God and strengthen you. And just like we were singing about, you know, we were telling the Lord, thank you for meeting my needs. That can be your prayer as well. Mm -hmm. Thank God that He is meeting every one of your needs today. Yeah, he one is. of His names is Jehovah Jireh, which means He's our provider and He's always there to meet your needs whatever it may be, whether small or big, He wants to provide for you. There's a scripture that says that, my God shall supply all my needs according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Mm. That's His promise, That's to right. meet our needs. And He's our shepherd. He is. He goes before us and He takes care of us. Yeah, that's, that's the God that we serve. He's a God who wants to take care of you and He wants to be a friend to you. And more than you could imagine, you know, a best friend, that's His heart and that's what He wants to be for you today. Mm. So we've been, you know, talking about thankfulness and how, you know, thankfulness is so important for, you know, every person. It doesn't matter, you know, who you are, you know, when you have an attitude of thankfulness, people are really going to remember you. They're going to know that you were a person who was grateful for, you know, just about anything. Mm. And that's the kind of attitude that we need to have towards God. You know, an attitude of thankfulness, yeah. knowing who He is. Mm. In fact, that's the way we ought to approach God. Yeah. You know, when you come to God, you can just say, God, I just want to thank you. Maybe, you know, like we were singing about, maybe there's a need that you're facing. And you can just start to say, Lord, okay, 
I thank you that you're meeting every one of my needs mm -hmm. because I know that you are faithful Good. and that you're, you know, you always keep your promises. That's what you've promised yeah. in your word. Yeah, and we yeah. also uh, talked about how we can incorporate thankfulness into our praise and worship. Mm. The scripture says it is good to give thanks to the Lord and I will give thanks unto the Lord for He is good mm. and His mercy endures forever. So you can start praising and worshiping God for who He is. And then we also talked about how we can incorporate thankfulness and thanksgiving into our prayers. Mm. We can start off praying bold and confident prayers yeah. because of God's faithfulness. And um, I'm reminded also of Jesus when He started uh, or when he was um, going through the town and he heard the news of one of his best friends who had gotten sick, Lazarus. And he had two sisters named Mary and Martha. And they gave, sent a report to Jesus and said, your friend is sick and he's about to die. And Jesus, he uh, stays a few more days and he comes later. And by that time, Lazarus is already dead. But then Jesus is full of hope and he reassures Martha and Mary and he says, your brother will live. Mm. And um, I, I like that, you know, I like what you said, yeah. Jesus being full of hope. Mm. That's that's pretty much who he is. He's, yeah. He was always giving hope to people. He was. When people were in a hopeless situations, he was always lifting them up with hope. Mm. And that's what that's he was doing. He in, yeah, in the story that, that Shalom is talking about, you're going to see how much of hope Jesus brought into a hopeless situation. Yeah. That's what he does. Yeah, I like the way Jesus, he starts off his prayer when he comes to the, when he comes to the tomb in verse 41. And uh, so Jesus is expecting the glory of God to be seen in this situation. And in verse 41, it says, they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and he said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. And I know that you hear me always. But because of these people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that you have sent me. Mm. Such a bold and a confident prayer. Father, I thank you that you have heard me. Mm. Jesus was so bold and confident that he said, Father, you have always heard me. Mm. Verse 41 and 42 is a powerful prayer. Yeah. You can start off by saying, Lord, even if it's a need before you. Now, in this case, it was Lazarus who was dead and it was a dead situation that um, Jesus had to go and resurrect him from the dead. And he started off his prayer not, not by saying, oh God, why did you do this? And uh, why He's is my this friend? friend? Oh, yeah. yeah, he didn't start off like that. He started such a beautiful way. I thank you that you have heard me. Mm. That's how much he knew his father hears his prayers. And many times, even David, you know, that's how he started with his, uh, when, he, when he started talking to God. He said, oh, I just want to give you thanks, God, because you are good and your mercy endures forever. Mm. That's such an awesome way to begin talking to the Lord. And talking to him with thanksgiving. Yeah, and when you pray confidently like that, you can know that God hears you. Yeah. And it's also um, a, gives a confidence to the people around you mm. to believe that, yes, God can do the impossible. Yeah. In First John 5, uh, verse 14 and 15, it says, This is the confidence that we have in Him, in Jesus, that if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. And if we know that He hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of Him. Mm. That's saying that we can ask God confidently and boldly, whatever it yeah. is we desire, and He will give it to us. You know, the part that really strikes in that verse is just so alive to me is that we know that He hears us. Yeah. We know that He hears us. That's how Jesus That's how prayed. Jesus prayed, you know, when He was, uh, when he was you know, coming right now in this position to, to the tomb of Lazarus. The first thing that he said is, Father, I thank you that you always hear me. Yeah. That's an amazing way to start your prayer. Even before you've prayed, you're already thanking God that he's already heard you. Even before you mention your need yeah. or whatever it is that you desire to come through in your life, mm. you thank him for who he is, yeah. that he has already heard you. Yeah, this is an amazing verse right here. It says, if we know that he hears us, which means it says even before you have um, received the answer, already got what you prayed for, you already know that He has already heard you. Mm. That's the key there, knowing that He hears you. Yeah. See, I just think, you know, it's it's like when you when you have a friend, you know what they're going to say even before they say it. You know, th that kind of attitude. Yeah. That's the kind of attitude that you ought to have towards God, is that knowing that He's already heard you. Because you know Him so much, you know Him to be so good, 
you know that okay even before i've brought my request god i know that you're already hearing my prayer mm. you're already hearing me yeah and then you can make your requests and your petitions mm. known to god in thankfulness yeah saying lord i thank you for this maybe it's a need that you have i thank you for providing for my needs i thank you for being my shepherd who goes before me mm. you're actually declaring who god is that's his character he is your shepherd yeah and by saying that you're thanking him for meeting your needs that's right yeah for what he's about to do see even before lazarus was resurrected or raised from the dead jesus thanked the father that he is going to come alive mm. th- that he's already heard his prayer yeah starting your prayers with thanksgiving will really change your attitude that you have towards god because when you see in in the end lazarus was raised up from the dead but what really is so amazing in that prayer that jesus prayed is that he already knew that his father heard him Mm. And you know what's so amazing is that it's not only for Jesus. Yeah. It's also for you. Because you are his child. And when you are a, when you are a child of God, you can pray that same way. You don't have to pray, you know, your prayers like as if God is, you know, some in some kind of a distance. Well, he is up in heaven, but he also wants to live in your heart. And when mm. he's right inside of you, there is no separation whatsoever. Mm. You can have that close connection with him. You can start to hear his voice. You know Jesus everything that he did in the word he promised that we can do the same thing. Yeah. That's what he said in his word. Yeah. So the way he prayed by saying father I thank you that you you have heard me. You can pray the same way. You can start your prayers like that and say father I thank you that you have heard me. Mm. I thank you that you've already heard me and I've already received my answer. Yeah. It is it's important that we um pray the answer in our prayers yeah, instead good. of instead of always you know expecting god maybe you hear me i'm not sure well that's doubting but faith is believing what the word of god says and and putting that into your prayers mm. when you pray when you know what the word says what the word promises you can pray confidently that's right and you can come before him and say lord i know that you are um you, you hear my prayer and yeah. that you answer me because sometimes we think well lord maybe you don't hear my prayers mm. maybe you hear these people's prayers or those people but you don't hear me but actually this scripture is saying you can know that he hears you yeah. when you pray according to his will and what is his will his word is his will mm. it's his will to heal you it's his will to provide for you it's his will to forgive you mm. to love you and it's all mentioned in the word. Yeah. When you take this Bible and you open it up and you read the promises that God has made for you, you can know what his will yeah. is for your life. Yeah, even when things are going wrong, you can pray the answer in that situation. You can pray and say, "Father, I thank you that even in this situation, I know that I've already overcome. I've already got the victory in this situation." Mm. And like, let's take another example. Just like we took about Lazarus and how Jesus already thank the father for hearing him let's let's see somebody else who prayed like this if you read um it's actually in the book of acts 16 and it's i'll just give the story in a nutshell um this is a this is a time where paul and silas they had um they had come to a place called macedonia and they knew that god had actually brought them to this place but uh, and in fact even before everything started to go wrong in the beginning things were just going so well for them they came in lots of people were getting saved and all that and then what happened was at this point they had they they faced a, a lady who was possessed with demons okay and she was um she was uh, she was fortune telling and you know all this kind of thing and then paul and silas they recognized that this woman was actually having a demon in her and she was uh, you know being talking controlled. yeah she was being controlled by demons and every day as they passed that way she would just you know keep mock you know mock at them and tell them these men are men of the most high god and so they knew that they had to put an end to this so what they did was they cast out the demon out of her and now remember she was making money for her owners so the owners were really unhappy about it cuz now that there's nothing in her controlling her she can't you know do her fortune telling so the owners get mad with them they take paul and silas they beat them up and put them in jail and now they're here in this deep dark dungeon with the uh, with nothing with just blood on their backs with chains mm. and at this point i i guess they didn't know what to do because yeah. they thought they heard from god well god you said to come to macedonia and preach and now when our preaching where we're in prison the preaching is over we're in the prison house now and 
it, you know, the scripture is so amazing. I'm going to read this one verse from that story in the book of Acts 16. Now, Paul and Silas are faced with such a with with such a impossible situation. Mm, Everything they, has gone wrong for them. They did something good. Yeah. They did something to help this woman, mm. but people didn't like it. Yeah. And worse than that, the devil didn't like it. Yeah. The devil who was trying to, you know, control people and actually bind people. Mm. That's what Satan's job is. You know, Jesus has come to set us free. Yeah. And he has come to set us at liberty, whom the Son that is Jesus sets free is free indeed. Yeah. You can be free of all kinds of problems in your life and addictions that you're going through. And this woman was set free. That's right. It was Satan who had bound her. Yeah. And so now they did a good thing and now they're put in prison for that. Yeah, yeah the owners didn't like it. Mm. And so just imagine now Paul and Silas are in jail and everything has gone wrong for them. They're beat up, they're, they're with chains. So now at this point, what can they do? They have two things either. They can complain and, uh, you know, just blame God and say, God, you made a mistake. You, you shouldn't have told us to come here. Look what's happened to us. We don't know. Maybe they did. We don't know. But then, this is what verse 25 says. They made a choice to do this, right? I'm sure they didn't feel like it. But mm. with blood on their backs, with chains bound all over their hands and feet, this is what they did. At midnight, so they've been there quite a long time in prison. At midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God mm. and the prisoners heard them. Yeah. Notice what it says. It says that they prayed and they sang praises unto God. What an, I mean, you wouldn't do that in prison, right? Yeah. In prison, you won't pray. You won't, you won't sing songs in a prison. Only thing you're going to do is complain, complain in a prison. Yeah. But it says that they, Paul, yeah, they were they praying. They realized that our complaining is not doing any good. Yeah. If they were complaining or, you know, worrying about it. But they knew the word enough to, to, um, to know that God is going to get them through this. Yeah. When they praise and worship God by choosing to focus on the Lord and to magnify Him, mm. they knew that He could get them out of this yeah. situation. And you know what they did by praying and singing praises? It was not in vain. Right. You know, if you just read the next verse, it says, suddenly there was a great earthquake. Mm. So the foundation of the prison was shaken and immediately all the doors were open and everyone's bands were loosed. And as you go on and you read down there, it says even, you know, when the jailer saw that all the prisoners were set free, everybody's chains had come off. He was so scared because now he's going to be in trouble because all the prisoners have got out mm. because of this big earthquake that has happened. And you know, Paul immediately at that point, he gets with the jailer and he says, don't worry, we're all here. We're not going anywhere. And then the jailer says, Paul, wh what am I supposed to do at this point? And then Paul says, well, believe on the Lord Jesus yeah. and you and your household will be saved. I'm amazed that Paul didn't say, well, jailer, now it's, we're, we're really got you now. We're out of mm -hmm. prison. You know, now that we, we can just get set free and you're in trouble. No. He didn't do that. He saved him too. He saved him too. And, um, you know, while these two, Paul and Silas, while they were praising and praying inside the prison, the scripture says that the prisoners heard them. Mm. You know, it was loud enough yeah. for people to hear. I mean, they didn't just quietly pray, okay, Lord, we, we hope that you will get us out of this situation. We hope that yeah. something is going to happen. They weren't very quiet about it. Mm. They were bold and loud. Mm. And it says the prisoners heard them and all their bands were loose. There was an earthquake that set them mm. free. In the midst of a, of a situation, when things were going wrong, they started to pray. We don't know what they would have said, but maybe they would have said, you know, Lord, I thank you that you have brought us out of this prison. Maybe they sang praises. Lord, we just want to thank you for meeting all our needs. Mm. We thank you that you're getting people saved and healed. Even though we're in this prison, we know that you're still alive and you're still working. Yeah, they would have thanked God that that woman was set free. They would have thanked God. Yeah. Yeah, and, and they were singing pretty loud, even in a prison. And you know what? They were all set free that day. Yeah. You see how when you start thanking the Lord, even when it looks like things are going wrong, and you start, you, you don't thank God that it's going wrong. You yeah. thank God for the answer. You thank God for the freedom that He has given you. You thank God for, you know, knowing that His mercy endures forever. And you start saying things like that, you're going to get set free. Those yeah. chains that have been, you know, holding you and keeping you in bondage, they're just going to come off of you. Amen. And we believe that today God is setting you free. As you start, you know, changing your perspective about God, you start coming to Him with thanksgiving and praise. Even when it looks like it's going wrong, 
God will turn that situation around as yes. you start thanking Him for the answer. So I believe that God is turning many situations around today. Believe that in Jesus' name.